Hey everyone, Alexi Talanda here, and welcome to our bonus content as we work on putting Ostium Season 6 together. We're continuing with our Behind the Ostium series as we go in-depth with the making and discussion of how each episode of Ostium came to be, as well as much more. I am joined by Dwayne Farver, a big fan of the show and creator of the spin-off podcast, Manifestations. If you enjoy the Behind the Ostium series, you can get full access to over 50 episodes right now by supporting Team Ostium on Patreon at patreon.com slash ostiumpodcast. You'll also get access to a bunch of other bonus content on there too. Once again, that's patreon.com slash ostiumpodcast. We'll continue working on getting Ostium Season 6 ready for release in 2022, but for now, sit back and enjoy another episode of Behind the Ostium. All righty, so episode 31. Yes, one is still the loneliest number. So an obvious, obvious copy to the previous season's opener, which was um, the loneliest number. Um, and also, of course, referencing the song, uh, one is the loneliest number, um, which was used, I believe, on the X-Files movie soundtrack. I can't remember if I said that before, um, but that's kind of another little reference there as a massive X-Files fan. I wanted to use that. Um, so speaking of music, this leads into um, the thing you notice pretty much right away as the season kicks off, that music is a huge deal for this season. It sets a tone for everything, um, gives feeling to it, and also is a kind of marker to tell you whose story we're getting and um, from what viewpoint, what's kind of going on. Uh, I wasn't able to have Chris write all the music for this season. It would require too much work for him. And because he's a full-time teacher, he only has so much time and voice in the part of Jake was more important than having him write a ton of music. So a lot of this music I got um, online for free. That was like um, the open source um, through the free music archive. And so it was a lot of kind of combing through that and finding the right kind of music. I already had in mind what kind of music I wanted for Monica and then what kind of music I wanted for Jake and what kind of music I wanted for Steve or Dave at this point. Steve hasn't been revealed yet. He will be later on in the season. <laughs> and so I was very selective in kind of picking each of the pieces and the ones that fit well. Um, what was kind of fun with it was that a lot of the music I picked had these kind of moments where they would stop, where the music would stop and then continue on again. So it was almost like this poignant moment. And while it wasn't, I didn't script it that way with the, the voice acting, it ended up working more often than not that it would be a big moment where all of a sudden the music would stop and something would be revealed and then the music would keep on going again. So it worked, they really meshed well together. Uh, I did use kind of one specific piece of music per episode just set on repeat. I felt this was, well, one, it was easier on me, mainly, but I felt it also worked really well for the episodes in not distracting the listener too much with the different kinds of music possibly going on. It's just the same one going over again and kind of setting the pace for the episode and not having you have to work too hard at being distracted potentially by the, the different, if there was different music or anything like that. I wanted it to be kind of part of the set of dressing, but not taking over too much with the episode as some music can do. Um, and again, it was kind of, a, I'm just copying a little bit from the previous season where I did use Chris's music, but again, just using that one piece repeated over and over. And I felt because again, this season was much like the last one, individual characters and kind of revealing a lot about them as they were relaying what was going on with them. It worked well, I think, to just have that single piece of music kind of going over and over again to set the tone and, and the feel for the episode. And of course, of how well <clears throat> um, having music kind of fills the space really well when you'd have the character like saying something and then thinking about it, you can have that music draw out for five to 10 seconds as the character's thinking this and as you, the listener potentially is thinking about what they're thinking about and then having them continue on it all worked really well. Um, I was, as I said, going through a strong similarity with the start of the previous season with Monica being all alone, but this time it feels, diff it feels different for her. She has more confidence. Um, she considers it a challenge of her being stuck in this place again. And, you know, she spent that last time going through a catharsis and learning and improving herself. And this time being stuck in the same place, 
while she's kind of at point A in some ways, again, it is a different place. And she's a, you know, a more evolved, stronger person this time. And she's not going to let it kind of judge her or go or control her in any way. She's going to call the shots and she's going to find out what she wants to find out and get the answers. Um, there's a reference in this episode that there are multiple doors to Ostium, potentially um, other inception chambers, but the, do they all lead to the same? You know, I kind of that was put in there as a, another question that will get potentially answered later on, but it does kind of pose the question of whether these other inception chambers, do they all lead to the same Ostium town? Do they lead to a different one? Um, I even dropped the number in there that there are 12 of these inception chambers. So that will be something I'll have fun exploring. I've got a note here. I'll have fun exploring that later on, I think, in a future season, what that might potentially mean, because we don't get to see it in this season. Um, I also talk in this one, you get to see, because it's a different Monica, you get to see that she now has a kind of connection to Ostium because of what she went through in her kind of um, finale storyline, which was in the sixth episode, I think, of season three, of what she went through and how she went through all that food area and then went through this weird tunnel, had all the strange sounds and everything going on and whatever it was, the blackness coming after her and was able to make it through and out the other side through this small space, which shouldn't have been possible, but she was able to do it. And so my point in this starting this episode here is that she's now evolved and become more aware that she has a connection to Ostium, much like Jake has. Not to his extent, probably, but she has something that's making her be a part of Ostium and be inseparable. With this episode, we have we kind of have more of a mystery developing here of what Monica is trying to solve. Um, there's a chance that there might be someone else here that she doesn't know. Um, it will, might be like it's going to other doors in Ostium, but she knows where to go. She's familiar with these places, so she's able to kind of look for things, kind of discover things, look out for stuff, kind of find out where, where there are some answers for her. You get a chance to, um, it actually get, did give me a chance with this episode as I was setting it in a new place to kind of go more into detail with tech and story from this Ostium network, this new place now, and then kind of talk about things of the past and how they're looking now in the future. So yeah, I was talking a lot about um, in this episode where you have this old Gibraltar here but it's also the Austin network is something new. And so in some ways you're seeing, you know, a futuristic modern place, but it's something that's been almost like abandoned for a while, um, disused in some ways because she's there all alone. She doesn't know how long it's been at this point. Um, and I was definitely kind of making a little reference there to um, Stephen King's Dark Tower series, which is very much a, where in this certain world, you've got all this future tech and stuff, but it's, you know, it's past its age. It's in a new age now, and it's kind of all used and old. And that's kind of a little bit of what I was going for here. But the difference, real big difference here is while it may look kind of old and dusty, everything still works just fine. Um, oh, I got a note here, Dwayne, about the coffee. Uh, I, as I love tea as much, um, I wanted to put a note in about how much I enjoy coffee too. So that's why I had to bring that in there. <laughs> Monica gets to have fun here in the Ostium network as opposed to where she was before because it's somewhere she knows and is familiar with, but there's no one else here. So she gets to do whatever she wants. She gets to go wherever she wants and there are no repercussions. So that's kind of a, a freeing element to it that she definitely didn't have anywhere else before. There's also a part of it where she's not totally sure necessarily that there's no one here. She's just pretty sure. So she can just do whatever she wants, be as noisy as she wants, make as big of a mess she wants. And this th will then kind of help her prove if there is someone else potentially here, they'll know about it because of the noise and racket she's making. Uh, again, as a kind of new place for her, it's a familiar place. She has her old things here as she discovers when she goes to her old apartment. And so there's an immediate connection there that was kind of fun to play with, with her connect, being able to connect to her old world that she thought she'd been, you know, permanently separated from and is now able to return to. Um, but again, I'm hinting here that this might be a different Ostium network to her one, but there's enough similarities here where 
all the particular um, things of hers or objects or data pad, things like that are still here. Uh, I did want to drop the bombshell with the, the data pad where the message she reads on there was sent from 10 years ago to give an idea of how long it's been and that just how much, how long this place has been abandoned, how much could have potentially changed and kind of how long it's been with her doing all these different things um, that how long away she's been. But again, because this is a time travel show, it's all kind of relative. So what might seem like a short time for her in fact, for this Ostium network was a lot longer. Um, and with the data pad also, it gave me a chance to kind of give some of past Monica through her data pad entries of, of what life was a little bit like. And I actually even did a whole separate um, little mini series of her data pad entries on Patreon, which if anyone hasn't heard them, they're all up there. Um, and then as she's reading them and kind of remembering them, it's a, definitely a blossoming moment of nostalgia as she's realizing how much has changed and gone wrong and that she you know rec with that comes regret and sadness that actually um one of the things you said there about the data pad mm -hmm. um actually about it being 10 years the message was mm -hmm. 10 years old um i initially thought and it was reinforced as the episodes went on mm -hmm. and we learned more, but it was completely wrong. I was, my theory <laughs> was completely wrong. Oh, so I sent I you down a, what do they call it? A red herring? <laughs> yeah. I initially thought we're seeing something that happened in the future, Uh huh. but this is time travel. So <laughs> they're going to get together. They're going to go back and they're going to prevent uh, whatever happened mm. from happening. And that just never happened. Well, I guess it's still a chance, was, right? <laughs> I, yeah, it's always possible. Um, but yeah, the uh, I was I was I was pretty sure that, especially I think it would would have been by like episode five. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh right. yeah, so things are going. They're they're going to figure out what went wrong right. and then go back and stop it from happening. And then, but by the end of the season, I'm like, okay, yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> so, uh, so I do have a question. Okay. Um, and it, Monica posed it, and I don't think she ever answered it. Um, do you know, or is it? something you can answer what does power the ostium network um yes um and you do get some hints of it in this episode um but it is and in season six you will get more hints um a lot a few more hints or well, few more details should i say not hits actual more details like like partial answers should i say not the complete answer <laughs> um because it's a building thing Partly because I'm working out as I'm going along what it is, the full story, but also um, I don't want to give everything away right now because of how it all connects further along down the line. So you will get more and eventually find out everything, but it takes a while. Be patient. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so then we do have, uh, so then she does go to one of the places she wasn't allowed to go to, Monica does, where she finds kind of the barracks area of these same, you know, security people that came to Ostium and who she thought she kind of sent to their doom. So there's kind of a resonance there that hits her that she, you know, say she's over it, but she isn't really. Um, you get to see inside of one of the restaurants in the Ostium network and kind of how everything works. Um, little hints, I think, did I make a reference? No, I don't think I make it a reference, but I'm saying here in my notes that it's almost like it's being run on some giant, you know, nuclear powered station sort of thing like a i'm thinking like a and you know a spaceship that's just drifting through space that will run on indefinitely through this nuclear power even though there's no one there um so that's a possible hint that it might be that but it's not that <laughs> um and then the other kind of bombshell was the um the, with the food with the expiration date was just something to kind of con something give it something concrete to make it feel really different really out of the normal and that this is something else going on here and make you question kind of like, where does, how does the Austin network run? Where do they get their food from? Um, you know, how does it all happen? Uh, Monica does mention um, as a reference with the food thing back to um, Covello, which is that little mini episode I did with Jake and Monica. And what's really interesting is I just randomly picked that town in kind of like, I, you know, 
picked about where Ostium is roughly on the map and then kind of moved in a northeast kind of direction and looked for a biggish town. And that's what the one I picked. And what's weird is ever since I've done that three years ago, whatever it's been, that name, even though I'd never heard it before, has just come up constantly in the news with, <laughs> I mean, usually not good stuff. There were fires near there. There's been like people arrested, pot farms, all these different things. But it's just weird how now that I actually know where it is, all of a sudden I'm seeing it everywhere, like multiple times a year coming up in the news. I mean, it's also because I'm reading more newspaper, maybe more, more of the local news. Maybe that's having an effect. But still, it's just weird. Anyway, weird side <laughs> note there. Um and then as we get towards the end of the episode, that's when we hear the first big boom of what the hell was that? Monica's freaked out as the listener should be too of what is going on here. And this is something that again, sets it totally separate from any connections you might have with the previous season. This is something totally new that we haven't had before. And then we end the episode with her finding this cemetery, which has never been mentioned before. Um, I can remember writing it that it was a you know discovery as I was writing it. That this is where Monica ended up. And it's like, well, it's a cemetery. What does that mean? And then kind of exploring it through her character of what it meant um, and what a big deal it was for her because she had no clue it was it existed and starting to wonder, is this something that has come into existence because this might be a different Ostium network or could this be something that has happened in the last 10 years to develop or is this somehow something that did exist before that they didn't tell her about, but she's pretty sure it's not that one because she would have known about it in some form. Um, it had fun using the music where I had it just stop here and have her end the episode with just her voice, which I felt made it really poignant and strong. And then of course, with her, um, reading the names of the various people there and then spotting Steve's name and her own name um, on there on the gravestones and intentionally using that same line that I'd used earlier for her um, talking about discovering the security guard Tanaka on the spaceship and the, the I can't remember the exact line, but just, I used a very descriptive line of what it looked like um, a child's piece of clothing, something like that. And then I wanted to reuse it here just to show how strong of a line it was and how, you know, this had changed everything for her. So started the episode off with kind of familiar things where you think you kind of know where it's going and then slowly start to move into new strange areas, giving you more questions. And then we hit you at the end with strange boom cemetery place, and then her gravestone and her son's gravestone. And just to really kind of like set the tone of what this season's going to be. And it's going to be like some, nothing you've seen before. All right, what you got for the episode? It was, it was very, it was very much a mystery. Mm -hmm. um, well, Ostium always is. But, I mean, it was, it was more like a, like a, Who I don't want to call it, yeah. <laughs> it, it was almost kind of like a, like a noir. Like it uh -huh. was very, mm -hmm. very, very atmospheric. Very, mm -hmm. the place Ostium, the Ostium network seemed foggy, uh -huh. um, just <laughs> because of what was going on. Right. Um, so I, I did write down that when we heard the noise, it sounded like an explosion, mm -hmm. possibly. Um, but she does, Monica makes the comment that it's a blue sky. There's no hint of what made the noise. And I'm like, all right, well, that's kind of weird. Cause <laughs> the way she describes Gibraltar is it's not huge. It's you, yeah. If a building fell down, you'd, you know, about something. It, yeah. And you'd see yeah. the smoke and dust and stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, so it's not a traditional thing making the noise. Mm -hmm. Um, the um, traditional in a sense however i can apply to ostium <laughs> correct correct um you would you would brought it up about when monica was going through the what we find out is the barracks mm -hmm. um and she finds the um the bunk for private tanaka i think um, this that, is that me a, just um very much as i always do just letting the character kind of tell the story of like oh she's going to this strange building I wonder what's in here and then discovery, oh crap, it's where these <laughs> security guards were hanging out that came in and got her earlier, you know, and just you know, I'm just as shocked as she was at seeing that because that's what came out on the page. It was it, it's a good as a fan, it's a good tie back. Mm -hmm. It's uh it's round it's again, it's rounding out the the Ostium network as a an entity, mm -hmm. um, as an organization. It's it's not just it's gone from season one from a town that was mysterious to now it's like uh, some shadowy figure or organization yep. 
that's running something and it, even monica's character wasn't really fully aware of yeah what was really going well, on. well it's i mean i have feel also it's i call it network for a reason which i'm just kind of really now that everything really appears to be interconnected to some level <laughs> And all of the characters, well, the main characters that we we deal with, like you were saying, Monica finds that she has a connection mm -hmm. to the Ostium network. And over time, more and more of that, each character's connection is revealed. Yeah. Um, so that, that, that I like that, that the characters aren't static. It's like, here's the character and that's what they always are. And right. they're their connection to the town doesn't change because jake's connection is changing all, all the time yep um and ways he's not prepared for usually but and i think know, partly of that thing. is as yeah as they all learn more they start to realize this but it's also just nothing is static as you say everything is constantly in change because time so, has a way of doing that when you mess with time <laughs> <laughs> so we we did get some questions from patreon mm -hmm. um on this episode so, or just well uh on the season so okay. i'm trying to find where i can fit them in to make them make sense for this for okay. the episode um and and pat did uh write in and she had the the same question about um jake dave steve and monica um are all dead 10 years in the future um have this version of them pretty much saying what i i had said that were they brought together here and now to try and find out what went wrong and stop it from happening um so I mean, so I wasn't the only one that thought yeah. that. Um, so there's a lot here about um, some of the other uh, episodes. So I'm going to leave that there. But there's okay. one more, th one more thing, and I know I've brought it up before, but it, it I, I think it's funny. So I'm going to bring it up. Again. Is this from Pat again too? Or this is from this is also okay. from Pat. Thank you very much, Pat, for sending in questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, why does Monica swear so much? <laughs> i don't know what you're talking <laughs> i brought i know i brought up before about how jake says something in the first season mm -hmm. about about his his off-color language and how he's not going to do it anymore. i think it does and in the second episode that, yeah. that goes out the window um, um so it was when i was creating the character for monica and just started to write her voice that's what kind of came out um that's the kind of person she is. And what's interesting is over the years, I've had many comments and reviews saying how much they hate it and how much they can't take that she swears so much. And then I've had plenty of other people say, oh, I love that she swears so much. It feels so real. I know lots of people like that to do that all the time. Um, I also feel it's how Monica deals with stuff. She swears more when she's in tense situations, when she's got a lot of stress on her shoulders, you probably notice. And this is just something that comes out as I'm writing the character. It just fits in right. Um, I do. I do. I can't. I will fully admit I have taken out some swear words as I've gone through successive drafts <laughs> to make her <laughs> swear a little less. Um, but it just it feels right for the character, and it's how it's gonna stay. <laughs> it honestly, it does um, fit the character. When when you think, especially thinking about Monica from season one through mm -hmm. you know season five it it fits um i don't know that i would be shocked to hear her go through an entire episode without swearing <laughs> um but it it would be it would be odd if it went on mm -hmm. you know for a couple episodes in a row and we didn't hear monica swear once and it would be like, Something's wrong I will say Monica. also, as while I have taken some out, I've also gone through some sections being like, no, she really needs to swear at some point in this. I need to drop an F-bomb in here or put something in here, you know. <laughs> but I think as I'm going over, as I'm reading over it and re-listening and stuff like that, it's definitely something I've noticed. At first it was, oh, this just feels right for the character. And now I realize I think it is a lot to do with her mood and kind of emotional level of as she gets more intense stressed out stuff the, the swearing is a, a mechanism to help her that makes sense yeah i know people like that mm -hmm. <laughs> so i'm going to save some some of the other questions for sure. later on when they okay. um come into those episodes 